I knew a man, Bojangles, and he danced for you in worn out shoes. Yep, my shoes are pretty worn out. <laughs> and I can't sing. Hey, I'm titling this video Drones and Tree Work. And it's not about how to use drones to do tree work, but it's how I utilize my drone to help me make decisions. And a lot of the videos that I'm doing, I use the drones to catch action shots, but more importantly, I use the drone to go up and inspect and, and make decisions. You know, a lot of times I'll go up and look at the top of a tree and, and see if they, I can see any damage. You know, sometimes uh, I will go out and uh, use it to, to help a, a client see things better. But in the long run, I just want to thank everybody because I just recently hit 25,000 subscribers. And you know, in the YouTube world, that's not that big of a deal, but for the content of my channel, I am really, really proud. So I've, there's a big thank you to all of you out there that are subscribers, a special thank you to a lot of you guys that consistently comment. And, and it's what's interesting is, is I feel like I've got pen pals, you know, all over the world. I've got people that I recognize, you know, the, the handle or the title of your, whatever, you know, you, you call yourselves. Interesting names too. Some of them are very obscure, but I try to respond as many as I can. But more importantly, I just want you to know that what I'm, I'm trying to do here is to build a community of like-minded people. So it's for professionals, it's for tree lovers, it's it, just for people who care about trees and want to learn more about trees. And I don't want you to think that, you know, I'm coming across as, as being, you know, the expert, you know, I, I know a lot about trees. I've been doing it for a long time. This is 47 years I've been doing this work, but I'm still learning. Every day I, I learn something new and I learn stuff from you guys. Some of the comments that, that you give, you know, there's there's experts in every aspect of tree work and, and, and there's only so much that I can do. But I also want to let you know that, you know, some of my uh, videos are on uh, woodworking and milling. And it, it's all related, it's all wood. You know, what you can do with the wood, you know, the valuable timbers that you can take out of, you know, when you do have a tree that has to come down, you know, sometimes it's rotten and you can find just a little bit of it that, that might be really beautiful, or you might find burls, or you might find something extraordinary. So look into my channel and, and you'll find about 10% of the videos are on, on woodworking. And I think you'll enjoy that. Even if you're not a woodworker, you'll enjoy it. So once again, a big thank you and let's go to Drones and tree work. Well, I titled this video Drones and Tree Work. I've owned a drone now for over two years, and I got a pretty good one. And I have a lot of fun with it. I go out and get some beautiful landscape shots like this. And I'm able to go out and play on big wide open spaces to get the hang of it. But it's also a very useful tool. Look at that double top redwood there. You can see things from a drone that you can't really see from the ground. Now this is kind of interesting. I'm not into sod, but look at the differences in the coloration of the grass down there. You can see the deep dark greens and you can see the light greens maybe those are different types of grasses that are coming in but from a an altitude you can also see the neighborhood now drones are very interesting because there are a lot of rules that you have to abide by you know the the federal aviation administration the faa has put out a huge list of rules and some of them like you're not allowed to fly over private property without permission. You're not allowed to fly over vehicles that are moving with people in them in case the drone should fall out of the sky and cause an accident. You're not allowed to fly over 500 feet. You know, so most people set their drone limit at about 400 feet. But there's a lot you can learn from a drone. Now, this is one of the areas that I work in Silicon Valley. This is... Uh, uh, the Cupertino area, and there are so many variances in this vast valley that I work in. And parts of the valley have a lot of trees and others don't. You know, the drone is also good for still shots. That's my wife and myself. And 
You can also get up above the trees and get some really beautiful sunrises or sunsets and, you know, shots that you can't normally get. Oh, I wanted to talk about another part of the drone that I got, and that's this little uh, visor that I got that came with it. This visor I can put on somebody's head, and what the drone sees, they see. So it's really cool to show people what's going on. So I live up in the Santa Cruz Mountains on 20 acres. This is my house, and I have a lot of fun flying around. But I've got to be very careful because I've got so many trees on the property that it would be really easy for me to destroy my $1,000 investment. Frankly, if I do destroy it, I'd get another one in a heartbeat. But if you're slow and careful and, and really watch out for the trees, uh, you can get fairly close. The, the drone also has some obstacle avoidance built into it. But, you know, it's, it's good for something solid, but it's kind of sketchy if you're talking about, you know, light brush and stuff like that. And it doesn't take much to knock a drone out of the sky. Matter of fact, I've had a couple of instances where birds have swept my, my drone and I've read up about it. There's certain types of, of birds that will attack drones. So there are a lot of places you're not supposed to take the drone. And many of the parks, national parks and state parks, now uh, forbid the use of drones. But a couple years ago, that wasn't in place yet. So I took the drone out to a state park. And I got some views of a waterfall that are really hard to see because the trail goes behind the waterfall and, and you can see it from the, the, uh, the creek outward. But to really appreciate the view of this, um, a, a drone is just an amazing tool. And, and did I mention the quality of the camera? It's a tiny little camera that shoots magnificent stills and magnificent video in high resolution. As a matter of fact, if you want to go as high as 4K, it'll do that. I usually don't shoot 4K because they're really big files, but I shoot in 1080p, which is <laughs> magnificent. So I, I had a lot of fun out here, and, and once again, I had to be real careful because there was lots of branches, and you really have to pay close attention to, to where you're flying it and what's around you because it'd be real easy to to back it into something or, um, you know, just uh, hit the controls a little bit too fast. On my drone, there's two modes. There's the regular mode and there's also the sport mode. And it goes the other way. It's got a learning mode. And if you're going to buy a good drone, like one of the DJI drones, I, I highly recommend that you start with the learning mode and, and really get good at it. I do enjoy taking it out in the forest. This is a redwood forest, and you know how many branches there are all over the place and how easy it would be to get into trouble out here. So I took my time and I flew up this trunk uh, for no particular reason other than to get better practice at using my drone. But you get a perspective that you just can't get from the ground. And a lot of times I like to go up and inspect the top of a tree or go up and inspect uh, defects that I might su suspect from the ground. Um, you could actually go up and uh, inspect a bird's nest and see if there's any active uh, animal life in there. Uh, as long as you don't get too close to disturb the animals. But, you know, with the ability to zoom in on things, especially the digital zoom that you can do on the computer, if you're shooting in high resolution, like 4K, you could be 50 feet away from a nest above it and stop and then really, you know, go still for a while and then digitally zoom in on it. And you'd see if there was eggs or anything that's active in there. So there's a lot of valuable things that you can do. I had fun looking at the creek down in this uh, steep wooded hillside area. This was way off the, the road. I was off the trails and went out in the woods and I uh, really didn't know what was out here, but I had so much fun getting different perspectives from where I was at. You're able to watch what you're doing through the, um, through the camera. Uh, so whatever the drone sees, you see. I like to go, like I said, I like to go up the trees and, and really try to scrutinize things. And there's a lot of decisions that I've been able to help people make. One time I had a, a client that had this big tree that they wanted removed. 
And so I said, well, let's, let's see what you're going to see if we take this tree out. So I went up to the edge of the, the tree and went out to the, the backside of it. And sure enough, the, you could see all the neighbor's houses and it would have opened up a really ugly view. So she opted to uh, keep the tree um, reduced for uh, privacy instead of taking it out. Now, here's the main reason that I shot this video. I wanted to go up and look at these cavities in this large canyon live oak. From the ground, I could see they were quite significant. And there's three really old cavities up there. And I suspect they may be joined. So I went up there and looked at them the best I could. But the darkness inside the cavities has me a little bit befuddled. I think it's pretty bad. I know I'm going to have to go up there and really look at it. Um, uh, you know, maybe put a, a ladder or, or rope in and get up there. I think they might all be joined, and that may mean that I've either got to significantly lighten up the load on this weakness or possibly get rid of the tree. But I was thinking, you know, if I found a really lightweight, ultra-bright LED flashlight, I could attach it to the drone, even just tape it on, and go up and have a, a little spotlight that would help me inspect some of these cavities. So I'm looking for a real lightweight, little tiny, um, maybe a, a button battery flashlight that really shines out bright there so I can I can do this. But, you know, it, it's all about discovery. The more I use this drone, the more I discover what I'm capable of doing with it. And uh, I think someday drones are going to be so far advanced that they're probably going to have drones with uh, chainsaws on them. And, you know, the power company is going to hire uh, drone operators to go out and do their power line pruning. I don't know. They already do it with helicopters. Anyway, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos and uh, leave me some comments. And if you're a drone operator, tell me how you use yours.